And good morning. Welcome to our out and about show here on 1590 KVGB 95.5 FM. We are the talk of the town and it's our monthly visits. It's uh, focused on Stafford County today. Joining us in studio for the program is Stafford County Economic Development Assistant Director Kathleen Norman and Evan Reed, who is in on the program today. Evan's got an interesting story on how he got to Kansas, a California native. Evan, welcome to uh, Great Bend in Central Kansas. Thank you for having me. Well, Kathleen, you got another Vista in town, right? We do, so we're excited. Evan, let's get your story here. A young man that could tell me about yourself. I mean, how, how long have you been out of, out of high school? How long have you been out of college? I want to know the whole deal. Then we'll get into your story on how you got to Kansas. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm born and raised in the Santa Clarita in California, uh, about 30 miles outside the Los Angeles metropolitan area. Um, graduated from high school in 2016, where I started doing the community college process with a, a emphasis in theater. Um, took a year off to work for the Walt Disney company in Orlando, Florida. Uh, interned there for a little while, uh, doing on some, you know, recreation attraction stuff. Yeah. So obviously you don't have a real fear about leaving home for long distance places, right? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a, a Vista position. So how do you find out about Stafford County economic development, the op and the opportunities in, uh, St. John, Maxville, Stafford, and, and all of Stafford County. Absolutely. So uh, once I came back from the Orlando area, I uh, transferred into the California Polytechnic State University of San Luis Obispo, uh, which is uh, off the central coast of California, maybe about three hours north of the Los Angeles area, um, where I just received my degree in arts administration uh, with an emphasis still in theater. I'm still very passionate about the arts, but I was trying to figure out whether or not I wanted to go into a master's program. Uh, so I did the whole master's program route and uh, was accepted into quite a few schools. But at the end of the day, I just wasn't getting the offers I was really looking for. And there was a little bit of burnout, too. I think after COVID, um, it ravaged California. Absolutely. Um, so doing these classes online, I think, definitely took a toll on my mental health. But I'd always wanted to do a Peace Corps mission. And I saw there was an opportunity domestically uh, with AmeriCorps. Uh, which is the uh, domestic equivalent of Peace Corps. So uh, sure enough, I was looking at any arts-focused related um, AmeriCorps opportunities, and St. John was one of the few and only that uh, was up my alley and is exactly what I want to do professionally. Kathleen, what did you think when you, when you saw Evan's uh, resume come across? Uh, I was really excited. Yeah, I was going to say, because it's, it's exactly what you guys were looking for, right, right? Yeah, he seemed like a good fit. And then there's always the, like, does he realize where we're located? And will he be okay with relocating here? So um, at the end of the day, he decided he'd take a chance on us. So we're super excited um, that he's going to be here with us for the next year. That's ab absolutely great. So tell me about your family. Family's great. Uh, so I got a mom and a dad. Uh, they're still over in uh, Santa Clarita still. And my sister, she actually just graduated high school. Um, so she's going to be moving over to Missouri State University as a freshman uh, starting this August. So I've been helping her move in and I'm dreading it, but you know, it will be a good opportunity. And, but you've uh, still got some family that'll be fairly close anyway compared to California. That's right? nice things. My sister, she will not have a car. So once oh. I get my car back from New Mexico here, uh, <laughs> The plan is to be able to visit her when I have the opportunity to. Yeah. Okay. So someone said, well, these cars in New Mexico, what's going Well, you had kind of a tough deal getting out here to Kansas. Yeah. Unfortunately, the car broke down. The engine exploded uh, in Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, so thankfully, the only thing that was under warranty on this vehicle was the engine. So it was a blessing in disguise because now they're replacing the engine for free, the transportation of the vehicle and uh, the rental car costs. How did you get the rest of the way then? I had to get a Penske rental truck, moving truck, because that was the only thing available on the way over here. Well, I imagine if you had all your belongings that you needed for the next year in your car, it probably wasn't too hard to fit it in. A oh, Pen no, Penske, not at all. Penske moving <laughs> truck. So, Kathleen, tell me what Evan's uh, duties will be here in the next year as AmeriCorps Vista for Stafford County Economic Development. Right. So, um, 
He is our arts focused community relations VISTA member. And so this is a position that economic development has in conjunction with Gray's Photography Studio. So he'll be doing a lot of work to help get um, the physical location of Gray's Photography Studio there in St. John kind of more function. The goal is to get it functioning into a community art center, not just for St. John, but for the county, as well as look at developing arts programming for youth. Um, people of all ages, I think even some looking at specifically maybe some senior stuff depending on funding opportunities and uh, areas of interest for Evan. And so it will be um, a lot of art, new new art opportunities mm-hmm. in a lot of different mediums. He has his background in theater and stuff, so we're hoping that that can be something that works potentially with the school districts, maybe doing some arts camp things of that nature, getting in the classrooms, but also what are opportunities to help create public art spaces, cultivate um, kind of a support for arts and arts programming in the county, and probably just some general um, town beautification um, around, you know, how you can utilize the arts um, to promote a vibrant community. A lot of work has been done at Gray Studio. Where are we at? What needs to be done yet? And how close are we to get this thing operating here? So the good news is um, that we have been awarded. Uh, we helped Gray Studio be awarded a $50,000 grant um, through the Kansas Historical Society. And so that should shore up some of the remaining kind of structural um, stuff that needed to be as well as get going on. Um, making the space usable. It's hard to say if that will, it won't cover everything completely, Mm -hmm. completely in terms of like there's an apartment space that can still be redone and utilized where the Gray family actually lived when uh, William Gray used the studio for his photography stuff. And so um, I think our goal is that within the next year, we will start doing some programming in there, even if the space is not completely um, finished, um, but it will be functional. Functional is all we need right now at this right. point. So, Evan, what do you think about Gray Studio? I'm sure you probably dug into the history of this pretty cool place. Absolutely. So, it's a unique opportunity and, uh, you know, lifelong dream of mine was to actually uh, run and operate it, own my own, uh, you know, brick and mortar community arts center. So, the opportunity to do it with such a historical structure, with such a immense background uh, is really a unique opportunity. And, you know, the space itself has quite a bit of potential, you know, um, just as uh, as an idea, for instance, of possibly turning it into a event space alongside as a community arts center. So um, no guarantees to that, obviously, but, you know, the, the options are definitely endless. So, uh, Evan, have I know that you don't have your car right now. Maybe you still have your, your rental truck, but uh, are you bothered at all by the, the uh, bumper-to-bumper traffic at rush hour in St. Uh. John? It's just horrible. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I'm just sitting there blasting my radio, you know, listening to this very radio station. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a change of pace. It is a diff- very, very different change of scenery. But um, the opportunity to work within this county and see what can be done uh, is very rewarding. And hopefully over the next couple of weeks and months and up to a year, you know, we'll be able to actually see those ideas and, uh, you know, come to fruition. Yeah, COVID was tough on everybody, and especially in California where the things were really locked down. Where are you kind of what what's different between the COVID <laughs> uh precautions here and in California? Well, unfortunately the cases have ramped up again in California. Yeah. So the mask mandate is back. Um and uh, you know, we were able to be fully reopened again, uh starting about mid June, but unfortunately the new variant is just sweeping across California like it does many other parts of the country. So, uh, you know, just stay safe and do what you need to do in order to get us back to normal. Here yeah, soon. hopefully you can stay mask free while you're out here because, of course, cases up here in, in this area in the state as well as we uh, move forward. So 
We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and have more of Focus on Stafford County coming up right after this. The St. John Jubilee Committee reminds you to always shop local first. COVID-19 has been hard for all. Remember, stick together and be community strong. Be courteous to others, be aware of your surroundings, and practice common sense. Small town values, old time traditions, the St. John Jubilee Committee looks forward to all of the fun times ahead. Find out about these events happening around the square on Facebook at Around the Square, St. John, Kansas. The friendly staff at Stafford County Drug appreciates your patronage. The lobby is open and they offer a convenient drive-up window. They'll even deliver your prescriptions in Stafford, St. John, and Maxville for free. Stafford County Drug knows the value of a hard-earned dollar and wants to work with you and your doctor to make prescriptions easy. For any questions on switching your prescriptions to your local pharmacy, call pharmacist Chris Davis at 620-377-5633. Stafford County Drug Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Inside White's Food Liner, Highway 281, St. John. Hey, folks, this is Trey Bergen with Ag360 Insurance in St. John. We are an independent agency offering several types of insurance, including crop, farm, irrigation, business, personal, and life. We would appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. Feel free to stop by our office at 103 East 4th Avenue in St. John, Or give us a call at 620-549-3579. You can also check us out online at ag360insurance.com. Okay, welcome back to Focus on Stafford County today. Kathleen Norman, Assistant Director for Stafford County Economic Development. Carolyn Dunn is on assignment today. She just ignoring me or what? That's okay. This is this is good, <laughs> and uh, and also Evan Reed. He's a new arts focused community relations vista with Stafford Eco Devo. So, where are you staying at right now? I'm currently staying. Uh, there's a studio apartment yeah. uh, right above uh, Stafford Eco Devo, and uh, their brand new house. Um, it's going to be opening up hopefully here within the next week or two. Yeah, I'm not trying to speculate when the actual <laughs> open house is, but uh, the plan is to have uh, some sort of open house uh, festivity as well as on a personal end. I want to have a housewarming party. So, you know, uh, any St. John residents or even Stafford County residents uh, that may be interested in coming out for a little cookout or potluck, uh, I'd be happy to meet you. I, I love that shirt. I mean, I've never seen anybody in the studio with a Cal Poly shirt in here before, but uh, nice look here. Oh, thank you. Okay, so you've been here since what day? It's only been Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> it's been here two days. We're just throwing them so right what, in. So Steve. what have you done so far? <laughs> you know, it's been a lot of orientation stuff. Um, you know, Kathleen has been really great about showing me the area, showing me areas that may need improvement over the next uh, year or so into my term here. Uh, so it's been really just familiarizing myself with uh, the Stafford County area. You got the story on the grocery store, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, that's a nice store that they have down there. They didn't even have it. And then, uh, yeah, you're, you're in with a pretty, you're going to learn quite a few things down there. So do you find yourself at this point, your just mind is racing all the time because you come in a new situation, you see the gray studio, you see everything going on, your mind racing a little bit, all these ideas you have flowing in there right oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's the best, it's the best position you could be in, honestly. Sometimes you're in a bit of a writer's block where you're kind of stuck on one idea for a long time. You don't really know how to go about it, but I see the opportunities within here in Stafford County just absolutely endless. And, you know, uh, the opportunity to recruit volunteers or other community members to spruce up their community and really get it back to its uh, its glory um, should be a really unique opportunity. Okay. How much of the, of the county has he got the tour so far, Kathleen? Is he, has he been to Hudson? So... Yes. So it's been twofold, Steve. So I've done the official St. John tour and next week we will do a full, I will help facilitate a full countywide tour, um, planning on a stop at lunch in Seward at mom's, but, um, he's been very proactive. And so he's, he's seen all of our communities, um, independently and just getting a feel for everything. So you, you cruise to Hudson? I did cruise to Hudson last night. Yeah. Did you see the Wheatland Cafe? I did, and I saw plenty of cats nearby that were clawing at the door for it to open. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure that, okay, Sunday, yeah. it's, it's yeah. And that's my thing. I haven't even been to Wheatland Cafe on a Sunday. Like, I've had them catered food. I've what? had their food at the fair. I've had their food at the food truck, but I need to get up there on a Sunday. So we'll need to make that part of orientation. 
and if yeah, you you will you will enjoy that a lot as well. Of course, going to other communities uh, around uh, Stafford County, Maxville, and and uh, Stafford, and and everything like that. So, what is the uh, so you you talked about recruiting people? What 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 do you mean by that? Absolutely. So, uh, for instance, I I'm currently living right above Stafford Economic Development, and uh, you know, it, walking around the town square is. It's a beautiful little area. It has so much potential to, to get some community uh, volunteers to uh, spruce up the area a little bit, you know, pull some weeds, repaint some some benches and whatnot. So, you know, things that will not necessarily break the wallet per se, but mm-hmm. are very simple solutions to create a more uh, vibrant and beautiful economy. Now, are you aware that uh, Dean Wade is a NBA player with the Cleveland Cavaliers and St. John is now the home of Miss Kansas? I I'll tell you what, St. John is thriving with homegrown talent. Uh, You know, in Dean Wade's situation, it's incredible that he was able to be an undrafted uh, free agent Mm -hmm. uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, you know, I'm I'm a big basketball fan. I'm more of a Clippers fan, more than a Lakers fan, I'll be honest. But uh, Good for you. Good for you. I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, trying to reach out to Dean Wade uh, to possibly even look at renovating one of our existing outdoor basketball courts would be something that would serve the community very well. And I'm sure it's something that he would have some experience in himself. So, uh, you know, opportunities like that to reach out to, you know, our homegrown talent would be very beneficial. Yeah. Dean and, and his family, they're, they're great. And of course, then Miss Kansas going on. So I don't know, you gotta have, you can probably have a special Miss Kansas appearance at least two or three times, Kathleen. So we're going to get this going here. Good. You sports fan then? I'm a sports fan. Yeah. I'm a Dodgers fan. So I'm sorry. The nice thing is my Dodgers Jersey. If when you look at it far away, it looks like a Royals Jersey. So <laughs> I can get right. away with that. That's you know? all right. The LA Dodgers are good. I got a couple of fantasy baseball players on their team. And let's see. Uh, except, uh, yeah. Josiah Gray. Yeah. He just, yeah, got, he called just got called up. Yeah. yeah so that, that's cool. What do you play sports in high school? I did cross country very briefly, but no, I, I've, I'm not, I was never an active, uh, body. Well, okay, that's that's all right. But you, you get an interest that that is really cool. I'm just fascinated when when you can talk to people from different parts of the country. So you come from San Clarita, right? Santa Clarita, yeah. Santa Clarita, and that's got an interesting story about that too, right? Yeah, you know, Santa Clarita is right on the outskirts of Los Angeles, so it was primarily used for film and television back in the day. For with how it worked is in Hollywood, they had a 30 mile radius in the area, so within the 30 miles, the mileage was going to be covered back in the day, and they needed to go to a desert or shoot a Western or anything in that realm. Santa Clarita was the place to do it because it had a very dry climate, had the old town New Hall area, which has a lot of historic buildings that were used in Chaplin's films and William S. Hart films. Uh, so the William S. Hart mansion, if, you, if you're if you familiar with some of the old movie stars, he uh, his residence is actually a museum in Santa Clarita. But I'd say the most relevant and current thing of Santa Clarita is their Netflix show uh, that was created just kind of, Without our consent, uh, it was called the Santa Clarita Diet on uh, on Netflix, and it stars Drew Barrymore, uh, and it's about cannibalism. So it's a very unique, uh, you know. Uh, that doesn't tell the accurate story about your hometown, though. Not necessarily. Okay. It's it's nice because they filmed on location. So if you want to see where I'm from, uh, feel free to watch the show. But the you know uh, the cannibalism thing is a. Uh, Not very accurate. Okay, that's good to know. We're going to take a break. Evan Reed is with us, Kathleen Norman. Also, focus on Stafford County. We're kind of getting an update on California, too, on the show. This is awesome. We'll be back with more right after this. Hey, folks, this is Trey Bergen with Ag360 Insurance in St. John. We are an independent agency offering several types of insurance, including crop, farm, irrigation, business, personal, and life. We would appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. Feel free to stop by our office at 103 East 4th Avenue in St. John or give us a call at 620-549-3579. You can also check us out online at ag360insurance.com. SJN Bank of Kansas knows the value of rural Kansas and is committed to all of the communities they serve. Personal to business banking and more. They offer mobile banking options too. Download their app at SJN Bank of Kansas and find them online at sjnbank.com. Serving you since 1905 and with six locations. SJN Bank of Kansas in St. John, Maxville, Hudson, Burnett, Greensburg, and La Crosse. Member FDIC. Yeah. 
Welcome back here. Are you following our conversation, Kathleen? You got there with franchise relocation and stuff like that? I know. I'm following some. Some of it, I'm not, like, I'm not a sports fan, so some of it's a little beyond my grasp. <laughs> so I'll just smile and nod. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's cool because Evan Reed is a, is, see, I almost said it, is a San Diego Charger fan. Yeah. Doesn't appreciate the move to Los Angeles. <laughs> So anyway, maybe maybe someone can hook you up when the Chargers come to Arrowhead later on. Oh, I hope so. so yeah, that'd be very good. So, uh, Kathleen, any updates that you have right now? You you mentioned the uh, K State House. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the official name of it, but I mean <laughs> that's still what we call it. Okay. I think it will forever be the K State House. Uh, its official address is 107 East Eighth Avenue. So it's at the corner of Eighth and Broadway in St. John. Um, Evan's going to be our first resident there um so we're working hard to kind of finish up the last few things so that he'll be able to start living there um so once we're currently working to get a date locked down to do an open house and that would bring in some of our grant funders and our some people from k-state to kind of see the finished product um and then i know evan has plans to do kind of more of like a community gathering there to allow locals to see things as well so. i don't know he seems pretty shy i think he's gonna be it's gonna be tough for him to get i know out people don't i think so too yeah i don't know i do worry <laughs> about him um and being able to you know connect with people in the community <laughs> yeah. she's being facetious don't listen <laughs> so uh you know yeah you gotta have an open house to meet to meet evan right is that yeah so the so there's the open house that's more for the project being completed by k-state and then there'll be another or it might be in conjunction kind of open house to meet evan and also see the space okay evan reed new arts focus community relations vista with stafford eco devo uh i'll I'll put you on the spot i like to do that with carolyn that's why she doesn't want to come anymore (laughs) anything new on the port authority right now So things are still in process on it. Um, I know the last time I was on, we talked about how there was a public hearing and the plan for development had been um, approved or adopted. The other, the next step was to, there was an establishment of a TIF district. So both the county and the city of St. John have um, approved the TIF district for that area. Um, Still things in the work. The main thing right now is how's this going to get funded? Um, and so it's looking at um, what are some opportunities to potentially utilize uh, funding that's coming down um, from the thread, federal gum, government through um, the ARPA, which was the American Rescue Plan Act. So there might be an ability to use some of that funding for this infrastructure development. We'll kind of see. And then there's some other avenues if that's not an option. So. Yeah. Still just trying to figure out the funding piece. Okay, and that would be an important one. But yep. it, it, this is a project <laughs> we've seen it come from uh, just an idea to, to where it's at right now. It's very, very exciting. Now, how many AmeriCorps VISTAs do you have? So is, we, is Evan the only one now? Or we, we've, we've graduated right. some other ones. So Yes. So Evan is currently our employed for lack of a better term, VISTA. So that okay. position is filled. We have two other open positions, and actually those have gone through a little bit of a change or transformation. We used to have an economic development VISTA position and an employment development position. And we have since transitioned to we have a public health VISTA position and a workforce development VISTA position. And so the public health will look at things like access to care as well as housing, um, and early childhood development, including like child care. And so it's more of a holistic uh, approach to it. But what are the things we need to help support the people in our community to lead healthy lives, but also support our communities to be healthy communities? Um, and so that's the public health VISTA kind of role in a nutshell. And then with our workforce development, it's a little bit of a shift. Um, our employment development had been doing some stuff more with the business side. We're really looking at developing robust training program things and also looking at needing housing and childcare to support a workforce. Um, So those childcare and housing have been kind of two areas that have come to the forefront as being necessary to support industry and economic growth in our area. So uh, you'll be filling those hopefully soon. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Maybe hit a home run. So if anyone's listening wants to apply, they can. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Kathleen Norman with us here today. Also, Evan Reed. So you've been to 
uh, Quivera Wildlife Refuge yet? Yeah, I took a stop by yesterday, yeah, but uh, I, I'll, I'll need to go back during regular business hours because I want to check out that visitor center. Yeah, it, and it's real. And right now, it's kind of like the the uh, highway is kind of empty right now, but boy, you get in the fall and, and the migration is unbelievable here. So you're in. That's I'll have to tell them where all the old high school football fields are and everything. All the small <laughs> communities who used to have high schools around here. Evan, great to meet you. Good luck, and and we'll be talking with you, I'm sure, very soon. Yeah, thanks for having okay, us. Okay, good luck with you. And Kathleen, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having us, Steve. Give my best to Carolyn. I will. Chicken. She's not one of you. <laughs> <laughs> one of us has to keep the trains on the track. <laughs> I'm glad that, that it's you. Kathleen Norman and Evan Reed with us here on Focus on Stafford County today. Uh, News coming up next here at the top of the hour here on KBGB. Great Bend.